In this video, we will show you how to configure a pair of Aruba AP567s for a point-to-point -point bridge connection. And at the end, we will test the link performance over various distances using a variety of channel settings. Make sure both of your APs are in default factory state and connect them both to the same network. After about 5 minutes, you should be able to see a Set Me Up SSID being broadcast. Connect to it and browse to setmeup.arubanetworks.com on port 4343. Log in by using the username admin and the AP serial number as the password. Please note that the password is case sensitive. You will be prompted to set a new password and to log in again. Once in, you should be able to see both of your APs as part of the cluster. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a wireless network on 2.4 gig radio for management access to the cluster. This is not a part of the point-to-point -point setup. It's just so I can easily manage the cluster and perform throughput testing when I'm in the field. I'll expand the configuration menu and select networks. Click on the plus sign to add a new network. Give it a name. Expand advanced options and select 2.4 GHz band only. This way, this SSID will only be broadcast out of the 2.4 gig radio and won't interfere with our point-to-point -point link performance which will use the 5 gig radio. Leave the IP and VLAN assignment at defaults. Set the passphrase and make sure there are no access rules set on this SSID. We'll now begin the point-to-point -point configuration. We will set up the SSID that will be used for our point-to-point -point link. Navigate to Configuration and click on Networks. Click on the plus sign, give it a name, expand advanced options and select 5 GHz band only. Click on Next. Leave the IP and VLAN assignment at Network Assigned and Default respectively. Set the pre-shared key and ensure access rules are set to Unrestricted before finishing the config. Move on to the Access Point section under Configuration. Select and edit the AP that will be set up as the Mesh Portal. The mesh portal is your upstream AP and the point will be the downstream AP that you want to extend your network to. Give the mesh portal a name, make it a preferred conductor and set a static IP. Here you can select static channel and power settings. We'll look into these later in the video once we are on site and we assess the spectrum. Make sure you select outdoor as installation type. This will limit the channel and power settings to your regulatory domain for outdoor use. Click on Save and ignore the reboot message as we'll reboot once we've completed all of the settings. Now it's time to configure the point AP. Give it a name and set a static IP. Change installation type to outdoor and save. Now we're going to make some cluster-wide changes. Navigate to System under the Configuration menu, name the cluster and under Advanced Options make sure Auto Join Mode and Extended SSID are disabled. We don't want any other instant APs joining this cluster by accident and extended SSID needs to be disabled in order for Mesh to work. Click on Save. Move on to RF settings under the configuration menu and click on Show Advanced Options. This is where you control your channel width. By default, it's set to 80 MHz on 5 gig radio and 20 MHz on 2.4 gig radio. If you wanted to go down to 40 MHz, uncheck the 80 MHz option. If you wanted to go down to 20 MHz, uncheck the Wide Channel Bands option. But for the time being, we'll keep the default as we'll manually set the channel width later when we're testing. Now we need to configure the wide part of the mesh link. Navigate to Networks under the Configuration menu. Select and edit the default wide profile. Ensure PoE is on and admin status is set to up. Then click on Next. I want to be able to stretch all of my VLANs across this bridge link, so I need to configure the wide port as a trunk. Native VLAN set to 1, and all VLANs allowed. You need to make these settings match what's configured on both of your switch port uplinks. Change the port type to Trusted, make sure there's no access rules set, and that the profile is applied to the wide port used to connect to the wide network interface 0 in our case. Click on Finish. Now it's time to reboot the APs so these settings can take effect. Expand the Maintenance menu and click on Reboot. Select all APs to reboot and click on the Reboot button. Log back in once reboot has completed. And you can see both access points are back online. 
If you click on the mesh devices on the dashboard, you'll see that both APs have a port or role. This is because they are both connected to our LAN and are using the Ethernet port as their network uplink. Let's finalize the configuration of our point AP. Navigate to access points under the configuration menu. Select and edit the point AP. Expand the uplink section. Change uplink management VLAN to 1 and Ethernet zero interface mode to downlink as our point AP should use the wireless link as the uplink, not the Ethernet port. You should now disconnect the point AP from your LAN and install it at the remote location. It'll take about 5 to 10 minutes to boot up and appear on the dashboard. And now you can see the mesh roll has changed to point. It's time to performance test our setup, initially at 100 meters apart. We've attached each of the AP567s we set up earlier to an Axeltex accelerator battery and a WLAN Pi running iPerf server. Before running our tests, we performed a quick check of the spectrum in the area using Ekahau Sidekick as well as WinFi Scanner to identify any potential Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi interference. Based on this scan, we settled on channel 100, which had a few other wireless networks present, but which was not overly congested. If you're provisioning long distance point-to-point -point wireless links, you need to understand the concept of a Fresnel zone. It's a 3D elliptical region between the transmitter and the receiver as shown in this diagram, and it's dependent on distance and transmit frequency. Luckily, you can find Fresnel zone calculators such as this one shown via a simple Google search. You should aim to have at least 80% of your Fresnel zone free of obstacles for your link to operate at its optimum. Direct line of sight between the APs is always good to achieve, but keeping your Fresnel zone clear will ensure the highest possible performance. Since we have chosen channel 100 for testing, which runs on 5.5 GHz, and are transmitting over 300 meters, we can calculate that our Fresnel zone radius is just over 2 meters. We achieved keeping our Fresnel zone clear by placing the APs on tripods and raising them 2.4 meters in the air. Our testing procedure was to configure the link to use 20, 40 and 80 MHz channel width and perform a throughput test at distances of 100, 200 and 300 meters respectively. Here's the summary of our test results. We were pleased to see performance over 100 and 200 meters, close to theoretical maximum, and we only experienced around 10% performance loss at a distance of 300 meters. This proves that the AP567 is more than suitable for point-to-point -point deployments over short sub-kilometer distances. And there you have it. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.